morning and welcome to City Line. It is great to be in your home. We are zooming from my kitchen as usual and we have a great hour ahead of us. Later on, we'll be talking with Noel Koran. He is the general director of Tacoma Opera about some of the virtual programs that they will be developing. And of course, restoring the clock. Old City Hall, we have Christine and Eli here to talk about this contest where the winner can win $1,000. Raising Girls, Sharon Chambers Gordon will be here along with their new outreach individual, Dale Golder, and they'll be talking about some of the new schools that they currently are servicing. The Humane Society will be here with their Pet of the Week. And with me now is a very familiar face. I am talking about the one, the only, President and CEO of Tacoma Urban League, Tawana Nobles. Hello, Tawana. Thank you. I am so happy to join the show today and to see your face. I feel like it's been forever. <laughs> it has been forever. I mean, I see you because you are so transparent on social media. You are probably the most active senator on social media, but I do miss seeing you once a week on Straight Talk. So I'm going to try not to hog you and share you with the rest of the audience right now. So first off, as we talk about social media, I just saw this. There is the upcoming third annual State of Black Tacoma event. Tell us about this. Thank you. We are really excited to host our State of Black Tacoma event again this year because what we focus on are um, gaps, uh, gains and areas for growth. So we look at the black community in areas of education, employment, housing, healthcare, civic engagement, and environment. And of course, we want to celebrate what gains we made this year. You know, everything is not gloom and doom. Um, there are lots of positive things that we absolutely want to celebrate in the black community. And then we want to be honest about the gaps, the work that still needs to be done. And as a community, because we ask our community stakeholders to join us for this luncheon event, um, we look at the opportunities to grow together. How can we improve the black community together? Um, and we want to get to that work. I'm making sure I have my little flyer up here with me, but we want to make sure that we use opportunities to grow and we work on those gaps together so that next year we can celebrate those gains. Um, our first year it was in person and it was such a beautiful reunion type of event. And I'll make sure that um, I send you all the link of, of that event that was in person last year due to COVID, it was virtual. And this year it will be virtual on June 9th. It's a luncheon event. So we'll kick things off around 11 a.m. and we will bring in industry leaders around those areas that I mentioned earlier, um, folks who are leading in that work to tell us what has it been like in your industry for the Black community and what is your call to action for this community so that we can grow and simply get better. Mm, I love that. So as folks are buying their tickets and marking their calendar for this event, what type of discussions can we expect to see this year taking into consideration, obviously COVID-19, um, a huge housing crisis, Black Lives Matter and other experiences from this past year? I think folks can expect honesty and transparency. I mean, that is the Tacoma Pierce County way where we're gonna be honest about who was and was not served during this COVID, um, th during this pandemic, during this COVID crisis, who was and was not served during this continuing and exasperated housing crisis. Um, some truths around um, black lives mattering and why it's important to say that and why it's important to, you know, not get bogged down and divisive um, and worried about all lives mattering. Because what we're talking about is we, we want every life to matter. But what we know is in this country, we are still fighting for black lives to matter. And it's okay to focus on where those gaps are. Um, and we, we want to make sure that we don't just leave people feeling hopeless because of the work that needs to be done, this conversation will also set folks up for success because each person that presents will let you know how you can get involved with their organization or their work that they're doing in the community around, again, education, employment, housing, healthcare, civic engagement, and environment. So this is a true way to not just hear the data, but to get involved and to be active. 
So Tawana, I can hear people in our audience saying, that's wonderful. Um, I'm a white person. Why is the state of black Tacoma a significant conversation um, for the entire community that I shouldn't miss? And folks ask this question each year. And folks, folks ask me, why the state of Black Tacoma? Why not the state of all the other colors that exist in our country? And again, it's okay to isolate a community um, to hone in on where we need to support that community. And in this case, because the Tacoma Urban League is hosting this conversation and our mission, our commitment is to the black community, to the African-American community, we want to make sure that we talk about those gains, gaps and opportunities to grow. And because we are a city that believes in collaboration, because we are a city that's compassionate, a city that is resilient and that believes in working together, everyone is invited to participate. You should not miss this because this is this is the conversation and the type of talk that we need to have so that we can simply get better and grow as this you know city of destiny and community of, of hope. Um, and I, I hope that everyone will just join us. So when we think about you, you've touched on some areas that the Tacoma Urban League is heavily involved with, and also in terms of promoting solutions and conversations. What can Tacoma do, um, Tawana, to disable or dismantle that structure or barrier that's in place when it comes to housing, employment, and education? Tacoma simply has to do its work. And this conversation gets us to doing that work. I tell folks all the time who come to me as a community leader or folks who come to Tacoma Urban League, I say to them all the time, you got to start with self. Do your personal work. So do your reading, make sure you learn the issues that are in the community, but this is a tool, an actual resource, an opportunity to get that information. People ask us at Tacoma Urban League so many times, what can I do? How can I help and support the black community? Well, come to the state of black Tacoma because we are going to tell you how you can get involved, how you can start doing your work. And then what I always say in addition to do your personal work, do your work is listen to the communities who are most impacted. The black community is almost always negatively impacted um, by everything that happens in this country, engagements with law enforcement, environment, housing. And so come and listen to us, listen to our community leaders, give you the data, hear the real stories of what it's like for us on the ground here in this, in this city, and then do your work, which is being committed to doing something about it, committed to taking action. I call that listening to the truth. How's that? Oh. We will have some truth for you. <laughs> a little, little truth dessert there. Tacoma Urban League has uh, been providing services online because of that shift with COVID-19. How has that impacted the overall service? And then how does the community connect um, with your services currently? Yeah, the good news is we are still actively serving our community. The good news is we've shifted our programs to meet the needs of now. So while we used to offer financial workshops on building credit, the need was small businesses who needed those same types of learnings and education and support, but they needed to keep their business open. So we fully transitioned to some new programs to support now, and they are currently offered virtually. So our housing programs, our parenting programs, our youth mentorship programs, our small business support is all virtual. And I think the bad news is I miss people walking through our doors, knowing where this organization is because it's been here for over 40 years and receiving our service in person. I really miss that. Um, but we are staying safe and following the governor's orders and waiting like many other social service organizations to open our doors for the public. But we are still serving and folks can contact us via phone. We check our voicemails all the time on our website. They can contact us directly. In fact, here's something that people may not know. If you reach us through our website on a contact us, I answer and respond to all those emails. They come to me. I like having that first touch of folks like, whoa, I didn't know the CEO would answer, but it just gives me that extra connection to community. So I answer it and I usually, unless I, if I can solve it, issue or answer the question I do and then I hand it off to a staff member um, who may be better equipped if I um, am not able to answer but contact us through our website 
feel free to call our office. We are still serving our community and visit us on any of our social media sites. We're on Twitter, we're on Facebook, we're on Instagram, and we're posting about all of our programs on our social media as well. So after this next question I ask you, brace yourself because you're gonna, your inbox is going to blow up on this one. Um, there is a major leadership transition happening soon. Uh, you are hiring a new CEO at Tacoma Urban League. Um, obviously because you are Senator Nobles by day. Um, and we all know that life in Olympia has lots of moving parts lots of hours to it. If anybody could do both, it would be you. Um, but knowing you, you want something full-time, someone full-time for our community. So what are you looking for in a candidate? Well, hopefully everyone who is listening to this or watching this can hear and see my passion for this organization. And the CEO that will um, follow me and follow Mayor Victoria Woodard, who was a CEO before me, and follow the legacy of our founding president, Mr. Thomas Dixon, who just turned 90 years old, um, they need to be passionate about this organization. They need to be passionate about what happens to the African-American community. They have to be sold out for the mission of this organization. There are some things that you can learn on a job. I was a brand new CEO. I was a classroom teacher one year. Well, actually one month and then the next month, I was the CEO of a black led social justice organization here in our city. But there were some skills that I brought to the table, my love for community, my love and understanding, my love for and understanding of this organization. I had been involved for several years um, supporting programs. So I am excited for someone to um, follow in the footsteps of all the CEOs who have led this organization, many who I did not name and did not get to meet and just do not know, um, but passion for our community, passion for this organization, and a willingness to continue growing this organization. So here's a question, Tawana. Um, does this potential new CEO need to be a person of color to apply? That's such a great question. And our board has said, no, they are open to all applicants. I will say traditionally, and from my experience as an urban leaguer, um, the urban league CEOs that I'm familiar with are um, black or African-American. This um, board who is responsible for hiring a CEO is open to who is gonna best lead this organization um, and grow Tacoma Urban League in its service to the African-American community and our broader community. So I recommend folks who are interested apply and a board will do its work to hire the new CEO. And I will probably get to this, but I wanna make sure I add that the position is open until April 23rd we're, um, we've posted the position on Idealist, ZipRecruiter, Facebook, LinkedIn, all the information about where to send a, res a resume and cover letter is there. Um, and it kind of lays out too the history of this organization and the roles and responsibilities expected in the new CEO. So when I ask you this question of how important are community relationships in regard to holding this position, I think you have just given us the answer. Yeah, significantly important, that's the work. I think for Tacoma Urban League and other urban leagues, any CEO, because um, we're an organization, so some CEOs are successful and some are not. And I think in an organization like Tacoma Urban League, the CEOs that are most successful simply care about the community. It's not a traditional ambassador CEO where I, you know, I, I go to the high level meetings and I take the photo ops and my name is mentioned. I have to make sure that the light fixtures are not flickering. I have to make sure that the new paint on the walls is correct. I, you know, though we've been closed due to COVID, but I can't wait for people to come into our office because we did some remodeling. I chose the hardwood floor. I run a direct program in our Sisterhood in the City program because I love mentoring girls. That's not required of the new CEO, but you have to be a working CEO. And I do those things because I care about this organization, which belongs to the community. I want things to be right. So I'm working with my staff. We work together to make sure that this organization sustains for a community. And there's no such thing as, I don't do that. That's not my job. We work really hard 
to make sure that Tacoma Urban League will be around for at least another 50 years for this community. So those relationships inside with staff, with board members, with our auxiliary and volunteers are just as important as relationships outside. This organization belongs to the community. So the community comes first. Love that. So are there any new programs being implemented at the Tacoma Urban League this year? Yeah, again, we want to make sure folks tap into our state of Black Tacoma in June. It's new this year. Um, also, we started a new series called Cannabis Careers. So making sure that we're doing our part around cannabis equity. This is a lots of money are being made in this industry, and we want to make sure that the Black community can tap into that. All of our programs and services are open to everyone. Um, but my recommendation is that folks follow us on social media to learn about our Black Parents Alliance programming. That's like a Black PTA to learn about our um, Being the Village program that is for moms and babies of color. I remember participating in MOPS at you know, the local church I attended, but as parenting people, we need support. And this is a support group just for that. So we do have lots of programs, including our home buyers class that we're offering this year. And all that information can be found online. Yeah. I thank you is not a phrase that holds enough gratitude and admiration um, for me to say it to you. But thank you for being here. Thank you for your transparency and your love for our city. Um, thank you for your humbleness and for your brilliance. Um, and thank you for inspiring us all to have those hard conversations. Um, you make those conversations easy, Tawana. I know I've had them with you. So I just thank you so much for continuing to pour yourself into our community 24 seven. Well, thank you. I completely admire you and we can just have a love fest back and forth all day long, but I'm so grateful that you sustain this opportunity for all of our organizations and community members to come and just put our work on display and engage more of us in this work. So thanks for having me today. Thanks for your service um, to our city and just thank you for being you. I'm really grateful for you.